Good morning and welcome to the Pastor's Corner. This is your, your host, Pastor Dr. Wayne Baker, bringing you the Pastor's Corner, which we believe to be the inspired Word of God. You know, so many times us pastors will say that our Word is inspired by God, but I'm of the belief that unless you are preaching the whole counsel of God to your people, how inspired is it? I'm not a positive thinking preacher. I am not a faith preacher. I'm a word preacher, the whole counsel of God. Matter of fact, God told Peter to go and stand in the gate and preach all the words of this life. I am a victim of what man has done on this earth, and so too are you. So you don't want a preacher who preaches half truths, do you? You want somebody to preach all the counsel of this word, to preach about housing, and most of all, to preach about sin, and a little about prosperity, and all the words of this life, housing, uh, the welfare of your life. But also you want somebody to preach about sin and how angry God is. Let us pray. But before we pray, why don't you get on the phone and call your loved ones, friends, acquaintances, co-workers, and everybody that you know and tell them the pastor's corner is on the air. Heavenly Father, we greet you today in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And we pray, Lord, that you will inculcate this message to your people so that the understanding will be clearly stated in all that you want us and in all that you declare us to do. In Jesus' name, we bless the sick, the shut-in, those in prisons everywhere. In Jesus' name. And Lord Jesus, help me to articulate your word today in a way that they can not only understand it, but receive it as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we go to one of the minor prophets. Minor prophets? Yes. Minor in the sense that it was just as important as Jeremiah's right. Minor in the sense that it was as important as Ezekiel's writing. Minor in the sense that it was just as important as Isaiah's writing. Although they wrote many more pages about God and Israel and the wrath to come. Nonetheless, Joel is just as important. The book is just as important. And in some cases, equally important. And I start to say <laughs> more important. So Joel is a book about prophecy that will come on all the Israelites. Now understand me, understand me. Israel had been dispersed at this time. Israel had undergone uh, probably about six invasions. They were scattered about. Ezekiel had written about dry bones and all. God said to Ezekiel, can these bones live? Well, Ezekiel was smart enough to say, Lord, only you know. And this is what, where we at today. Uh, can these bones live? Lord, you know. Can the church survive in this era? Lord, only you know. Lord, what are you doing with your people today? It seems like all of these things are coming to oppress us. Lord, only you know. So Ezekiel put it back on him. He said, well, prophesy. People, that's all 
we can do is prophesy, preach to these dry bones. And so Joel gives insight into what is going to happen in these latter days. And the thing that Joel says is not good. It's not good to you, it's not good to me, it's not good to our flesh. Because unknowns to us Christians, terrible times are going to come on this earth. We're going to be tried by fire, just like our early fathers were. The Romans took them, they cast them to the lions. Uh, they were gladiators in the Colosseum of Rome, and they experienced the punishment of Satan. Matter of fact, that, that is what all of the Inquisitions was about. Now, you've heard of the Inquisitions, hadn't you? Who were there? Basically, the children of Israel. The Roman armies came in and killed, if the calculation is right, about 10 million of, uh, of the people and the children of Israel. They were scattered about. They went down to Africa. Well, the thing about Africa is that our people, the Israelites, look like the Hamites, as uh, they did when Jesus escaped uh, to Egypt. He went to Africa. He didn't go to Europe because the people in Africa looked like Jesus and he could hide himself in Africa. Nonetheless, that was coming on uh, this earth. And you see uh, the sun, the moon, the stars, the element of nature will be affected. And you, you cannot hide. The Bible says during that period, uh, we're going to, excuse me, we're going to run to the rock. And we're going to say to the rock, rock, fall on me. And the rock is going to cry out. Uh, I'm running too. You see, all hell don't break loose on this earth. Well, let's tune in now to the book of Joel and see what he say, has to say about this period. The word of the Lord that came to Joel, the son of Pethuel. And so he identifies who he is. Hear this, ye old men, and give ear all ye inhabitants of the land. Hath this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers? I'm going to answer for them. No, it has not, Joel, because what you are about to pronounce, I don't particularly want to hear. In other words, my flesh does not want to hear it, because you're about to pronounce doom on the earth. Let me get one thing clear. The day of the Lord is not particularly for us Christians, but it will weed out the Christians who are half-hearted Christians. In other words, like Agrippa. Uh, he was almost persuaded, though it seems that could be a bad translation Paul, are you trying to persuade me to be a Christian? The Bible says, almost persuaded. But, however, Agrippa died half persuaded. It is to convince us. In other words, we're going through the fire and be prepared. Uh, Tim LaHaye did a series uh, it was in Tao Left Behind. That was the name of the series. And so it scared a lot of people. This rapture theory that they propagate in the Bible is not true. I'm, I'm telling you, it's not true. And we base this on America's uh, theology. Right over the sand dunes, right over the horizon, the cavalry always come. Have, have you ever saw those Indian movies when it get tight and 
the hope almost gone, the cavalry always comes in to rescue uh, the people. It's not going to be like that, people. There's going to be hard times on this earth coming to this earth. It is called the time of Jacob's trouble. Now, the children of Israel is not in that land today. They are imposters who are there. What the day of the Lord is for is to transport them, God's people, back to that land that God promised to give to them. It is to correct things that are wrong, to give reparations to those people who have been wronged by other people on this earth. It is to check Satan and check him. Our God will put him in his place. It is to judge the nations. And let me say this. It is also to judge Israel. Uh, we're going to be tried, people. And it's going to be by fire. Now, when you throw gold in a fire, uh, the gold is not worried because the purpose of the fire is to purify the gold. And the gold qualities cannot be destroyed. They, can, they come out of that fire more blessed than when they went into that fire. So we as Christians need to hold on. But now we're going through periods, people, that I would doubt whether one is a Christian. We cannot even miss a meal unless we're complaining. We have, the church has bred a lot of soft Christians. <laughs> I'm telling you. So in the book of Joel, he said, tell your children of it. And let their children tell their children. And their children another generation. Tell them about this. And we have been telling people about this. This book was written about the seventh uh, century uh, B BC. So we've had about 2,700 years to tell our children. See, God has given us a warning. He has given you a warning of things to come. What he's going to do. God always, he has always revealed through his prophets things to come. And he has always given you and me a warning about our sin. God does not do anything haphazardly. He warned us of these days and our sin. Matter of fact, before he flooded the earth and destroyed the old world, God warned Noah and gave Noah a chance to preach to them for 120 years and they still would not change their ways. God is good. He is gracious. Now, in case some of you are wondering, there is no difference in the Old Testament than the New Testament. A lot of us find grace through Christ. We should. Uh, law came by Moses, but grace came through our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. And, but the God of the Old Testament was no less gracious and full of grace toward us than Jesus Christ is in the New Testament. Let us remember that. God is gracious. He's love. He is justice. He is an unchanging, immutable, omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent God who cannot change. So he, he told his children to tell their children of it always, from generation to generation. That which the pomeroy hath left hath the locusts eaten, and that which the locusts hath left hath the cankerworm eaten, and that which the cankerworm hath left hath the caterpillar eaten. <laughs> In other words, this is a, a direct a belief statement that their food will be scarce. For everybody, if the cankerworm cannot get it, if the caterpillar 
cannot get it. The locust has destroyed everything. Now, who is the locust speaking symbolically? I believe the locust is Satan attacking everything. There will be changes in the heaven. There will be changes in the earth. The Bible in this book says that the sun will be darkened and refuse to shine. The Bible says in this book that the moon will drift away in blood. So that will be changed. In other words, who is God judging? God is judging everybody on this earth. I preached uh, the last two Sundays on the subject from 1 Peter, the uh, fourth chapter, verses 25, 26. That judgment must first begin at the house of God. People, us Christians, we will do anything Anything the world says, anything the United States of America sanctions, such as homosexuality, that, people, that is a way that the world has to distort the human race. Who put it in there? Not the United States, but the devil uh, back in the United States to do it. And Barack Obama was I, I may offend you for saying this, but he was the worst president we've ever had as far as morality is concerned. I believe that with all my heart. Awake ye drunkards. Preachers are drunken now. Drunken with sin. Not so much alcohol, but drunken with sin. Drunken with homosexuality. And I, I know you have heard this mess that is going on with uh, Pastor Jakes, uh, Puff Diddy, and all of these people. Awake ye drunkards, and weep. See, we ought to be weeping. We ought to be weeping over our sin, the thing we have done. We ought to be weeping over how weak the preaching is in the pulpit. We ought to be weeping. Awake ye drunkards, and weep, and howl, all ye drinkers of wine, because of the new wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. Now, what is the new wine? New wine is the Spirit of God that later on uh, Joel will reveal. He said it will be poured out on all flesh. Jesus even quoted it. Paul quoted it after the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is, is the new wine. The new wine is able to get people together. The new wine is able to speak to our sin, to correct us in every way. Verse six, for a nation to come, for a nation is come up upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he hath the cheap teeth of a great lion. People, this is Babylon that's coming. Great, mighty Babylon that is coming. Now, let me tell you something about Babylon. The whole city was so fortified that the translators said that 10 rows of chariots could ride around on that wall. It was governed and um, controlled by a wicked king. His name is Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar from Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar ruled with a rod of iron. He was about to come upon Israel at that time. So the Bible describes him as a lion uh, with great big teeth of a lion. For he hath the teeth of a great lion. You see, Israel had already been under one nation. They had been under the Egyptians, who was more in color like them. So they were able to go there. Uh, Egypt was skilled in uh, not only their own theology, but history and they knew all the crafts. By the way, all 
the crafts, almost every single craft began in Egypt. Uh, architecture, Egypt, military, strategy, Egypt, uh, biology, Egypt. All the sciences began in Egypt. Embalming, the priesthood started in Egypt. Circumcision started in Egypt. And almost everything started in Egypt. This matter of fact, language is writing. I've got a book with writing. Egyptians had five or six writing systems. They had, first of all, hieroglyphics. They had hieroglyphics. They had a writing system called G-E-Z, G-E-E-Z, G-E-Z. They knew about cuneiform writing. All of those writing systems came out of ancient Egypt. And most importantly, they knew about anthropology, where man came from. And they knew man came from God. But the thing about Egypt was that they were highly idolaters. They are the sons of Ham. You see, Ham did great things on this earth. We can't deny that. But he was an idolater. Now, when the children of Israel went down, when, when uh, ever um, the Roman general in about 100 AD of Vespasian, Vespasian uh, conquered Jerusalem, to escape, the children of Israel went down in Africa. Now, the people in Africa knew that they were different from them. And so they worshiped stone gods. They worshiped snakes. They worshiped wood and worshiped stone. And the children of Israel worshiped the true God because Abraham was a man that worshiped God. People, it's a long story about Abraham, but we are his descendants. We went down in Africa, and the Africans sold us. There was a place down there called Negro Land, uh, the Gold Coast, the Grain Coast, and almost all of our people went down there uh, around the Slave Coast. So they knew where we were, and the people in America, Europe, knew who we were. Uh, they knew who we were, and they knew where we were, the children of Israel. And so during the Inquisitions, during the Roman occupation, they sought to destroy us. But God intervened. He helped us escape. Matter of fact, the story of the great red dragon in Revelation, the... Uh, the devil sought to persecute the woman, but the woman escaped. And that was God scattering us all over the planet Earth. If not, we would have been annihilated. Well, my time is up. God bless you uh, this morning. But I'll be back next week, and I'll start at verse 7. I want to expose it all through this book. book of Joel is a very important book. Father God, I thank you this morning for blessing your word. Uh, let us tune in to all of these passages that we might have a better light on the plot of this world. This world is about to come to an end. This dispensation, the world is not going to come to an end, but this dispensation will. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, I have advised you to write me uh, at P.O. Box 12323, Columbus, Georgia 31917. That's uh, the pastor's corner. 31917, uh, Columbus, Georgia. I want to thank you for your listening in this morning, for your participation, and above all, I request of you to pray for me and to pray for this ministry. I am Dr. Wayne Baker for the Pastor's Corner. 
I'm saying to you, so long, God bless you, and have a good week. We want to share something truly special with you today. As we navigate the journey of faith, we often seek guidance and inspiration to deepen our relationship with God. That's why our pastor has written two books that we believe can be a source of strength and wisdom for you. Order now and embrace the extraordinary power of faith. Spearfield is a church that is definitely family oriented and we believe in being together. When you're at Spearfield, you're at a place where you never ever feel alone. There's always someone either praying for you, checking on you, making sure you're good, and also spiritually feeding you. So we're thankful to have a pastor like Pastor Wayne D. Baker, who definitely teaches from the heart as well as from a place of education and higher learning. We're grateful to have that because he breaks down the word into a place in which you and I can understand and be able to add it to our practical lives every day, I'm telling you. So listen, if you now don't have a church home and you're looking for a place to settle and looking for a place to join and be a part of a family, please come see us at Spearfield Ministries where it will be the end of your search for a friendly church. Spearfield Ministries, the end of your search for a friendly church. We are located at 3898 Mulberry Drive, which intersects with Morris Road in Columbus, Georgia. Services begin at 10 a.m. on Sunday and Wednesday night Bible study at 7 p.m. You may also watch our services on YouTube and follow us on our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Hashtag FF Ministries GA. You may also contact us by calling 706 562 0071 or via email at FF Ministries GA at gmail.com. We hope to see you there.